Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the next episode of Life's Black Belts podcast. Again, I'm your host, Eric Alders. Uh, sorry for the two-week hiatus. I have just started uh, physical therapy recently, and it's been taking up a few days in my week. In addition to owning the business and having twins at home, I had to take a little time off, and we're back today. Uh, and my guest today is actually um, a, a friend that I've known for many years, but this is probably going to be the longest conversation we've actually had. Um, even though I was at your wedding, this mm-hmm. is still going to be our longest conversation that it we is, had, right? which I think is, <laughs> I think is pretty exciting and interesting and why I think that uh, the organic rawness of these interviews uh, unfold live as it happens. But anyway, um, I want to introduce our, our life's black belt today, Mr. Ken Schumacher, who's joining us today from Texas. How are you, sir? Good. Thank you very much for having me. I'm really excited to be on the podcast. Uh, and I love what you're doing and you have a true talent. So oh, I appreciate um, I really that. Man. Listening to everything and I'm definitely going to keep tuned from here on out. So well, it'll, it'll help some of our Texas audience grow a little bit, maybe, for sure. Uh, I hope so. We get a lot of, uh, a lot of new Texans coming our way uh, recently. So, so uh, the, the state's getting bigger, we're getting crowded, but uh, it's, it's a good thing. And what, what, what town uh, or city in Texas am I speaking to you from? So we are in McKinney, um, which, to give you an idea, I think uh, when I kind of started coming here to visit my parents, it was about uh, 2000, 99, 2000. And uh, gosh, there's probably, I don't know, 40,000 people, maybe even less. Now there are uh, 155,000 people and they expect it to go up to 310,000 people within the next 10 years. So it's It's like a crazy boom. Yeah, Yeah, we're about 35 miles north of Dallas. And um, just, you know, we have some really big things happening here in our neighboring town of Frisco, uh, Plano. Uh, we're becoming more well known around the country, and there's just kind of a melting pot of of people, businesses. Toyota just came here. Uh, the Dallas Cowboys are here, um, and a lot of uh, CEOs are moving their companies here to our town. So, you know, it's good for my business. It's good for just you know a diversification of of people, and sure. you know, and but it makes driving a little crazy because you have the Texans, the Californians, and, you know, the New Yorkers that all share the roads. So it's a little crazy. Oh, yeah. Well, the New Yorkers are probably going to win that battle most of the time. <laughs> they do. Yeah, the New Yorkers seem to be the most logical. The California just kind of cut in and out, and the Texas, they just drive really fast. So yeah. it's, it's uh, fun. <laughs> yeah, you got to have a special skill growing up in the uh, tri-state area to navigate. Either you, you learn to survive on the road or you just don't drive. <laughs> That's true. That's true. But um, so, it, you know, we'll, we'll uh, go to the beginning in a second, but just to really connect how we came together, uh, you happen to be married to a very, very good friend of mine who uh, happens to be one of my wife's sorority sisters that I went to college with uh, for a short period of time. We actually were roommates when I uh, first got together with Tiffany and we, uh, there's some people in life that, that come and go in and out of your life and there's others that, that seem to stay longer and longer and your relationship continues to grow and and, and Suze has been one of those people where she's just like uh, like a sister I, honestly yeah. she's one of the most uh, beautiful human beings mm-hmm. inside and out I've had a chance to know and she has her own story I told her I'd love to get her on the show as well yeah. she, she's overcome so much oh, yeah. um, but I also know how happy that that she's been since meeting you mm-hmm. uh, and we'll get to that but at least yeah. a little connection on how we've gotten together and she kind of uh, made me more aware of what you're doing uh, nowadays and how interesting your story was. And once I heard about that, I was like, let's, let's do the show. So yeah. why don't we, uh, that's how we know each other. Um, mm-hmm. But let's go back a little bit. Why don't you tell me you're in Texas now, where did you yeah. grow up? Is that where you started or, or where did you? No. <laughs> so I'm, I'm Jersey uh, boy. Right. Uh, I grew up in Northwestern New Jersey, um, you know, in Andover, which is uh, in Sussex County. And, um, you know, I, I would always tell people that, you know, when you land in Newark, that's not what it yeah, always man. looks like, you know, down the parkway, New Jersey is actually a very beautiful state and there's, really um, you know, a lot of hills, a lot of country, a lot of farms. Um, and we, you know, where I grew up, there was one traffic light in our town and, um, it was just the best place to grow up. You know, you would, when the sun would rise, you'd go out and play, you'd come back when, you know, the sun set and, you know, there wasn't a care in the world, you know? So, right. um, 
you know, there was tons of activities, tons of, you know, uh, sports and things to do. And you just, of course, you know, kids get in trouble and it was a perfect town to kind of get in trouble, but nothing really bad happens. You know, you're just kind of just a great place to grow up. So, um, yeah, I, I grew up there and I probably lived there till, oh, I was about 18, 19 years old and then kind of migrated closer to the city. You know? Yeah, well, we, we grew up at a different time where, uh, like how my kids are growing up now with mm-hmm. social media, mm-hmm. you know, even when I was leaving the house today to come here and do this, I'm trying to yeah. be like, all right, so you're going to put your clothes away and mm-hmm. you're going to walk the dog and you're going to do some mm-hmm. dishes and they're like looking at their phone like, mm, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, it's, it's a different world. I mean, they, yeah. they, they even have to take classes now in school on tablets, but we had to kind of get outside and just have fun. So I guess growing up and if people don't know that part of New Jersey, it's a, it's a more rural area like i said it's not the city of newark that you move in i grew up down here you know by the the beach and the shore area you're more in like a, a woodsy uh area so yeah. so what was that like as a kid growing up was it difficult to, to make friends would you have like a small school that you attended or what yeah well uh no i mean it's funny because we i grew up um and you know one of my my best friend in the world uh lived right down the street two houses down i mean uh, naturally uh I guess that's what most happens to most people. And then, you know, as you grow, you kind of, by and large, you, you, you start to, to lose touch with those friends. I guess not with social media now, but, you know, you had that, sh- that area of time where you kind of lose touch. Um, everyone from that neighborhood I still talk to. It's crazy. You know, I'm still friendly with, but um, it, 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 I mean, it was great. We would, we would play basketball. We'd play baseball. We'd play, you know, flashlight tag that yeah. was the best, you know, and, um, manhunt and we'd go down in the woods, get dirty, you know, swamp everything. Um, and it was just, you know, it was adventurous. We would, uh, like to build things, build forts. And, you know, you think about how, you know, the creative juices flow sometimes, you know, um, you, you learn and you just kind of go out and all you have are sticks or, or like a blanket and you just use your imagination and you build something with it where, these days, I guess it's a little bit different where you have everything at your disposal. It's in your hand and you can learn it quickly. But um, so it's very interesting how we grew up then and probably how your kids are growing up now. How, right. you know, there's maybe a quicker way to get to it, but um, it's just interesting how, you know, you do things yourselves and you just kind of plot it out that path. Um, but uh, yeah, our school was right off our development. So we'd walk to school, you know, and um, then, you know, we'd, we'd take a bus to high school or whatever that was down the road and um our town was so small that you know it was a district high school that we'd go to so um you know our town and like three neighboring towns went to this high school and something about mckinney uh, mckinney has four high schools and each high school has probably triple quadruple the amount of kids that my high school had you know in new jersey which is insane so Um, you know, when you tell people, well, all these kids from all these different towns went to one school, they go, what, how big was your school? I go, well, it was tiny because there weren't many, there wasn't a big population up that way. Um, but man, it was a great place to grow up though, you know? And, um, I, I mean, I, at my, I don't think my life would have been the same if I hadn't had those roots, you know? Yeah, I think uh, it gives you a, a an, an innocent way growing up. Like, you know, for the kids, sometimes they'll say, put your phone down and just go outside and do what? Go go outside, figure yeah. it out. Yeah. I mean, I showed them how to. My wife yelled at me because I showed them how to use a magnifying glass to like burn leaves and sticks, yeah. stuff yeah. like that. And yeah. oh, you yeah. know, it's like you you. I would go out with my brother, and you just you figure it out. You have fun. You walk around. You you don't uh, you don't arrange like we do now. You you have to arrange a play date and figure out a date yeah. on the calendar. It's like a official business when you gotta like hang out where we're like knocking on someone's door, like, hey, you want to come outside? It was yeah. it was a simpler time, and I definitely. Uh, I think I also appreciate that I had that experience. I don't know what it would have yeah. been like growing up, like like our kids are gonna with the social media. Um, yeah. you know, when you grew up, you know, being in the small town, did you have uh, a lot of siblings, or were you an only child? No, so I have uh, two older sisters, and okay. um, boy, they're they're two pretty talented people. Uh, they're both extremely smart, and uh, oh boy, they uh, they did really well in you know academically, sports you know, every, everything, they were, uh, friendly, nice. Uh, they listened to, uh, their parents and elders and, um, uh, they're both two tough acts to follow. 
Um, so, but they, I mean, they grew up the same way. They both had that same upbringing in a really safe town, uh, and, you know, in New Jersey, which I don't know, a a lot of people probably won't understand, but uh, it was probably like growing up in Nebraska. I don't know. You know, when you're that young, because you don't have loud sirens, you don't have, you know, hustle bustle of people. It's just quiet, you know, and there's a lot of just open areas, big yards and, and, you know, forests to get lost in. And, and, and did you have a, a nice bond with your sisters growing up or how, how much is the age range between you guys? Yeah. So my, my oldest sister uh, is 10 years. And oh, wow. um, so she, uh, she was the, you know, valedictorian of her high school. She uh, w- went off to college. She finished college in, and got her master's in under five years. I mean, she was just brilliant. So uh, she left the house when I, I was eight and that was it. So um, bits and, I mean, obviously I remember all of us being, you know, in that house, um, but uh, for her, there was a lot less memories because um, as I was getting older and really starting to form my, the person that I am, um, she was uh, largely absent. To give you a funny story, um, you know, I was a really sweet kid when she left the house, I was into sports and basketball and everything. And then, uh, she went off to college and kind of during that time is when I, uh, we call it the, the, the black hair phase. Uh, I got into music, All I right. started, I joined a band and then she came back and when, you know, who, who are you, my brother, you know, what happened here? So it was just like this whole you know, space of time that I just came into my own, I guess, as a youth and she just was absent from it. But, you know, we would, we would record cassette tapes and I'd mail it out to her and she, you know, she'd listen to it and then record a cassette tape and send it back to me. You know, that's how we communicated, you know, through the mail. Uh, my middle sister, uh, we had more of a, you know, rivalry, like your, you know, your classic, uh, brother, sister type thing. We were six years apart. So, um, when she was, you know, in high school and everything and starting to want to really be cool and, and fit in, I was the guy that was embarrassing her purposely, you know, to, you know, sure. but, uh, but, but brothers, all, are, that's what brothers are supposed that's to That's what brothers are. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but, um, and you know, because I'm my mother's only son, she, uh, she always, she defended me pretty well. Uh, okay. Regardless, uh, who was at fault, but, uh, my, both my sisters definitely gave me a run for my money when I was, when I was young. So I guess it was due back, but, uh, living so close to them today, we always talk about that. We just reminisce about just the crazy, funny memories that we have, you know, and, and they bring up stuff that, you know, of course I don't remember, but, um, it's great to hear that stuff, you know? Yeah. I think it's, I I grew up with a brother and Mm -hmm. my dad and I didn't have a lot of cousins around. So, you know, having then got married and my wife's got, you know, two sisters and then we had twin girls and literally like every friend of ours, except for two, all have girls. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a different experience seeing females grow up from such a young age Mm -hmm. uh, throughout. So I'm sure you had that experience a lot. Mm -hmm. Uh, It has made me learn more about how to communicate properly uh, to to, to women. So, uh, you know, Mm -hmm. maybe having had them uh, in your household, maybe made you a little more sensitive, uh, uh, mm-hmm. as a husband and things like sure. that. Uh, yeah, you brought up yeah. some stuff though. I wanted to, to rewind back on. You said that okay. uh, at, at the time you were there, you were uh, heavily into sports. Um, so, and then you talked about the, 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 the kind of goth stage, which we'll get yeah. to. Yeah. yeah. You, don't, you don't strike me as the black hair, Marilyn Manson kind of guy. Not, not anymore. Yeah. No. But uh, we'll get to that. So why don't yeah. you rewind as uh, take me back to your athletic days, you know, mm-hmm. um, is it something to keep busy in town or you just found oh. the, a natural talent or what, what, what was your sport? No, I, I, I didn't have a natural talent. Um, I had to work really hard. Um, I was, I grew so fast or I, let's put it this way. I was really short. Um, uh, when I was in sixth, seventh grade and I basketball was my, just, that was it. Um, and you know, I love Michael Jordan, you know, he was my idol. Um, and I love the Chicago bulls and I just, you know, we, we'd go out, we had the adjustable height basketball rim, you know, and we'd, mm-hmm. we'd of course lower it and dunk and everything else. But, um, I went from being very, very short to then be growing tall. Uh, and probably my most, my, my best year in basketball, um, I had grown, I think 12 inches that year. Wow. So I had the growing pains and I was just awkward. 
and I was, but I was so competitive and I wanted to kind of learn. I, I, I had to listen a lot and that really humbled me because I would always play with pe- players that were better than me, older than me. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was a key to a lot of successful things that I've done is, you know, l- listening up, um, mm-hmm. l- listening to people that, and mentors that have been through things and really listening and not going, Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Really absorbing it and, and trying to follow uh, lessons and, and rules. Um, but I gained momentum there. Uh, I became pretty good. I was a you know, starter uh, for my grade school. Um, I was on a um, kind of a weekend league. We played for New Jer- the state of New Jersey. We represented, which was kind of neat. We played up in Canada. Um, and there was guys dunking on us and everything else. Um, I uh, went to Pope John. I don't know if you're familiar with it. That was a, a school in Sparta. And um, uh, the late the Christian Leitner and the Hurleys, they were all affiliated with that school. So when, when we had the summer camp, we actually had them mentor us and teach us and we got to play with them and boy, that was humbling. So, um, that really, the things like that would always challenge me, but, um, then I kind of lost interest into the music. Um, that's when I really got kind of hung it up and, um, it kind of flopped when I was going into high school, um, at my, uh, grade school games, the high school coach would come out and scout me. He goes, Oh, you're going to start JV. You know, you're going to be my point guard. And, you know, I said, Oh yeah, great. You know? And, and then I, I, once I got to high school, unfortunately, I just, I, you know, I, I just wasn't interested anymore. And of course he was my history teacher. So when I didn't come for tryouts, he was not too happy with me. And that was just an interesting class that year. But, yeah. um, but you know, I'd always kind of, um, been, had that competitive, wanted to get better, um, work drills, just, you know, practiced, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and kind of had that same attitude towards anything else that I took. So that was really important to, um, some of the lessons that I've learned, you know, in life and that you just can't pick up a ball and be good, you know? Right. Well, I think you, you bring up some points that I try to bring up a lot when I'm Mm -hmm. teaching martial arts, which is that you have to surround yourself by people that are constantly better than you. And like you said, you have to ask up. It's something Mm -hmm. I think as a society, we've gotten away from a little bit where uh, instead of just going to school, like it is now you study, you learn, you get a degree, you're supposed to get a job. Back in the day, you would have to mentor and intern with someone and an apprentice with someone and Mm -hmm. learn hands on and not just from a book. Mm -hmm. And it's the same for your sports and in life, but with martial arts, same thing if you're going to compete with somebody in class, whether it's a grappling match or a sparring match, obviously, um, it's easy to go to the person that you know that you're better than. But the only yeah. way you get better is by constantly going, in our case, to the person that you know is going to basically kick your ass. Yeah. Because that's, that's how you get better. You have to force right. yourself into uncomfortable situations uh-huh. mm-hmm. and learn how to grow from that. And a lot of people will look at, at someone where I'm at you know, and, and see a certain level of expertise, but what they're not seeing is the 30 some odd years that it took to, to get there. They want to kind of just jump to where you're at and they come mm-hmm. in and they see themselves less flexible and out of shape and they go, well, I just, it's just not my thing. I'm not an in shape person. I'm like, well, listen, you don't have to be a world champion, but if you stick with this and you keep asking questions, you keep showing up, you will get better. And it sounds like that's kind of what you did. The reason I like to ask people about their past a lot and, and, we get to your, your current status, but the past mm-hmm. shapes us who we are. The, the lessons we learn, uh, whether it's from sports or family, these decisions that we make kind of, you know, shape the, the men and the women that we become. So like if, if you realize that you were the short guy, you used basketball at the time as the venue for you mm-hmm. to figure things out about yourself. And it sounds like you had to really make yourself uncomfortable and force yourself to get as good as you could where other kids can naturally walk in and, and, and run circles around you. So do you, yeah. is that kind of where you were getting at? Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, um, some kids have natural talent and, um, I, I don't know. I mean, I would, I, I would run so hard and just, I guess I was more of a defensive player too. Um, I knew, Sometimes that, you know, I, I can't drive in on that guy. Uh, he's, you know, he's going to just feed me my lunch, you know, so I, I, I need to guard him better. I've got to just 
learn that guy and know what he's going to do and anticipate where he's going to go. And I think, you know, if, if you're trying to be a well-balanced player and you have to really know what you're good at and what you're not good at and, um, or what your strengths and weaknesses are, I don't want to say not good at because, you know, skills can be learned and achieved, but, um, with sports, your size is your size. And, you know, you may have the ability to shoot a three pointer, um, and you might be able to run faster than that guy. But, um, if you can't, you have to have a plan on how you're going to be effective and help your team. And that's the other thing with teammates and knowing where people are going to be knowing, understanding personalities, the guy that wants the ball too much, the guy that, you know, is uh, kind of sloppy, you know, you have to, and I was, I guess a pretty good leader cause I was always point guard. So I would, and, and it wasn't because I was physically really good. It was just because I, I could communicate with other teammates mm-hmm. and kind of direct them. Okay. You, you run this way, that guy's slow. You can, you know, and be more of a help, help the coach a little bit with that. And um, there's just different aspects. So you just have to be aware and tuned into a lot of things and be nimble with your thoughts and decisions. You right. know, and, you have and, to utilize and, the skills that you have. And then right. maybe if you're not the most physically gifted person on the team, you found other areas yep. of, your, of your mind and body where you could say, all right, maybe I can't jump like that guy, but yeah. I could do all of these skills that I have to try to tie the team together to communicate, like you said, better, which, yep. you know, I think trans forwards or transfers forward in life when you start to sit down with groups of people in business meetings and learning what different personalities you're working with. And maybe I need to communicate with this guy a certain way, but this lady will be here after, you know, but now we're all three of us are together. How can I navigate this conversation? Well, and maybe you don't need to be the best, but you have to learn to be the best version of yourself in the particular situation. You know what I mean? That's right. That's right. So, yeah. um, you know, and I think sports in, in essence, if you, is, you know, if you're on a good uh, team or an individual sport like martial arts, if you have a, you know, good coach uh, and good people to work with, I think there's a lot of good and bad that comes out of that. But overall, the lessons that come from it, I think, are, are really important for people. Mm-hmm. But you got, you got, go ahead. You know, I imagine for, for you, especially, um, you know, your adversary, you have to, you know, you, you might be able to do something really well or, or have this confidence, but boy, you know, it's, it's, it's mostly mental, you know, and, and then just putting your body where it needs to be. Right. Right. But there's so much thought and um, just a a finite amount of time to make a decision and and move. And, you know, so there it's, it's like a chess match. It absolutely is. I say all the time that martial arts is chess with the human body. Mm -hmm. And it's not just about who's physically gifted, because I've been humbled many times by people that are half my size, by females, by Mm -hmm. especially when it comes to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, which is a grappling art. uh, You get humbled so, so often. And what you have to learn to do is, is almost sounds so Jedi like, but you almost have to learn to like tap into not just what you're seeing, but what you're feeling, learning, like learning how to pick up on like small little details, Mm -hmm. which I think are those details that you start to learn how to apply in life and conversation and business. It makes you more aware of of yourself. And there's times where, you know, someone, you know, uh, I have somebody in like a chokehold and Mm -hmm. I think that I'm not even close whatsoever yeah. and they're, they're showing yeah. me no sign whatsoever and i let go of it and they're like oh thank god i was about to tap out like <laughs> seconds later i'm like i wow. start yeah. to learn how people could disguise you know mm-hmm. uh, certain things that they're going through and, and mm-hmm. it's just it's interesting because i think through all these experiences whatever the venue be uh, sports mm-hmm. music whatever you mm-hmm. life i think is all about learning about who you are and how to yeah. in- interact with people uh properly you know that's right and and that's uh, all self-awareness you know and um, emotional intelligence and that's something that can be improved upon or mm-hmm. espoused upon and um knowing where you are and kind of having like an an overview of what you look like in your situation um I, I, when i short story but when i was in a corporate um my i had a great boss uh for a number of years and he would just he pointed me in the direction of you know the secret and and um emotional intelligence and he says look your iq is your iq and if you have a good iq great but your emotional um and, and your aware your self-awareness that's something that can improve 
So that's something you're always going to want to learn is, is being aware, uh, being in touch with how you're feeling, how other people perceive you, um, you know, how you sound, how you look when you're doing all these things. And uh, that is a really humbling experience. And one of the most humbling experiences sitting down with people and saying, how, how, am, I, how am I coming off? Mm. How, you know, am I, um, Am I, am, I, am I being fair here or, and boy, when you get that answer that you're not expecting, that's when you really start to realize like, okay, well, I still have some work to do. Sure. You know? and, I think life's a lot about our ego and you brought yeah. up books I like, like The Secret, yeah. but I also don't yeah. know if you've ever gotten into like Eckhart Tolle at all, like The Power of Now or New mm -hmm. Earth. Oh, yeah. We're talking about ego a lot and trying to recognize when your ego comes into play, sometimes yeah. when it's telling you how amazing you are and yeah. other times how much you're, you suck and how awful yeah. you are and everyone's yeah. better than you are and trying mm -hmm. to learn how to balance that all out, it's, it's, yeah. which is one thing I love doing what I do because my ego is constantly checked. You're yeah. constantly, as good as you think you are, you're constantly reminded that someone maybe working a little harder, a little better than you. And what That's you right. said is, is, is a super mature thing that a lot of people I don't think uh, do. And they, hopefully they just picked up on, which is trying to learn how other people in the world view you. Mm -hmm. But add to that, be ready to hear it. Be right. ready to listen to what they have to say and not just immediately defend yourself and snap back. And, right. and that's, that's the challenge of keeping your ego at bay because we all have a tendency of just like striking first and striking back. And mm -hmm. then usually you calm down. You're like, oh man, I was a, at least that's what I've learned a lot as I've grown older. I look back at things I did as a teenager in my 20s. And I'm like, why did I make that decision? I was, right. I was a little bit of a jerk there. And you try to learn. It's constantly learning uh, you know, progress. You know? Yeah. So it seems like you've got a lot of that. Yeah. And especially being a business owner too is, you know, it, you can control what you can control, but you know, there are outside entities sometimes that challenge maybe you're a deliverable of yours or a, a timeline, something like that. And, um, that's, that, that's always my challenge is, uh, you know, Oh, I can control this, this area, but this area I, I can't control. So of those areas that i really don't have much control over, I want to make sure that those relationships are really good. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if I have to go to an outside source and get something done, it, it's seamless and that I'm not, you know, pick it on them or it, so that they're welcoming my call and I don't seem overbearing or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So um, I've tried it both ways. I've been very stressed out in those um, circumstances and it's gotten me nowhere mm -hmm. and where people are, uh, you know, very apprehensive and I, tr you know, that, I mean, that's, that's a tough thing to do to, to, to when, when you have a stressful situation and that's when fear comes into play and, mm -hmm. you know, you start to lose control of your emotions, things like that to really check them back in. Mm -hmm. And again, right. take a step back and look at yourself and say, what can I control? What can I control? And of the things that I can't control, how can I affect the situation to make it a little bit better or influence it a little bit? Right. So absolutely. Boy, that, I mean, and that's life, right? That's everywhere uh, with all relationships and all, you know, things. So, um, yeah. It's, well, learning it's to listen to too. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. a lot of people love to speak, but learning to, to shut your mouth and listen to yeah. people and everyone has different personalities and what we mm -hmm. intend sometimes is not what's perceived. I, I'm sure you get this being married as well. Sometimes mm -hmm. in, in our brain, we're saying something and it makes mm -hmm. perfect sense. And you even think that you're being compassionate and considerate. Yep. And then all of a sudden that person hears something completely different. You're like, are we in the same room? I don't even yeah. know what just happens here, but yeah. you have to take a step back again, check your ego and go, all right, I love this person. How could I learn to communicate better right. constantly so that we could actually get the message we want to get across? And how can I acknowledge this person's feelings and, and it, can we grow from this? And that's, that's a personal relationship. It's a business. It's, it's, it's everything. And it's everywhere. Yeah. It's, it's something that it's a consistent thing that we all have to work on and, and not just some people just put a wall up and be like, screw you. I don't tolerate yeah. BS from anybody. Right. I got right. no room for you in my life. Mm -hmm. uh, again, like we talk about emotionally, it's, it's easier to express anger than it is to express sadness and fear. And often right. your, your anger is, is a mask for what yeah. you're really afraid and upset about but it's easier just to be mean and angry and hurtful to someone than to admit your own vulnerabilities. You know what I mean? Not right. to track, but no, but, but because it feels better. Right. Exactly. So, and we try to, you know, coax our ego and make sure we're massaging it and everything else. But, yeah, um, man. you know, so, it's when you're, when you're, uh, 
I, I guess when, when you're kind of off, when you're in discomfort, if you're comfortably uncomfortable, I good things will happen. I think mm -hmm. when you um, put yourself in that in a situation that um, you don't know if that's going to affect the situation, good or bad, but you have a feeling that well, if I'd be a little bit nicer, if I if I uh, if I follow up this way, it might go because what are what are the uh, you know, what's the counter to that uh, mm -hmm. being angry and mean and that, that probably won't get you anywhere so right so let's take a, a pause for a moment because we uh we went off a, a little bit from your storyline because i want to build up because you got some exciting things going on currently i definitely want to get to mm -hmm. but uh I, I gotta hear the story about your transition into music uh I have a side hobby of playing uh -huh. the guitar at home. Oh, nice. Um, okay. I, I know we share a similarity of, of music. You like Dave mm -hmm. Matthews' band. Yep. yep. I actually started playing the guitar because of Dave Matthews because oh, nice. I like the music so much. I was like, if mm -hmm. I could play his music at home, and it mm -hmm. sounds like it, like I just did it for me. And as yep. songs started to come together, and I was like, wow, that actually sounds like the song, I would be able to go to shows and watch him grab the guitar and be like, He's about to play Lie in Our Graves. And then yep. he plays it. And people are like, how do you know? Yeah. I'm like, well, yeah. watch him what he's yeah. doing. But yeah, exactly. What was yeah. your uh, what was your draw into music and, and what did you play? Well, so okay, this started before I could talk. And uh, I I don't know. My, my sister, we, we always had a piano, and my sister, my oldest sister, played the piano. Um, and she it was it, it was great, you know, she could play and her fame and all these other entertainer and um sometimes when I, you know, I was crawling or at some point she would play something and I would just kind of crawl up to the piano and hit the right note. And she, she didn't really understand. And I would, she would get to a point, I know this note, you know, and then she would look back on the music. She goes, you know what? You're right. Um, when I went, you know, my parents went to church, they took me to church and I would come home and I had this little organ and I would just play the song. And I, you know, I don't know how I did it. I, I still don't know. I, you know, it was just, I had an ear for music. So wow. it was just an octave and I can just figure out the notes and it just made sense to me. So um, music was very simple for me. Um, I took a lot of lessons, but I kind of stopped and learned my own way. Um, the reason why Dave Matthews, I think is kind of interesting and a, and a great musician. One is he surrounds himself with just amazing musicians. Mm -hmm. And two he has a very orthodox way of playing. Um, and that, that influenced me um, when I picked up the acoustic from the electric because that showed me that these are not standard chords. And when you start to open up and learn that style or like a John Mayer style of playing, you can go anywhere, you know? And um, it, it's taking from these really good musicians and taking a little bit of a style and mm -hmm kind of mixing them together into whatever you're doing. So, um, but, so I, I, I was, I would play the piano when I was young cause that's all we had at the house. And then um, I, you know, when I was very young, I started taking uh, guitar lessons, electric guitar. And I was in a band um, in the very early nineties, I guess. And um, we did pretty well. We would uh, kind of play around New Jersey. We'd play up in New York and uh, we were on a couple of radio stations, stuff like that. And I was really young. And a lot of the, uh, my bandmates were six, eight years older than me. So I had a lot to prove, you know, um, again, having not that, not in the music sense, but trying to be mature and trying to get into a club because, mm -hmm. you know, I, I look old enough or, you know, and, and um, so that was always a concern of mine being always the youngest, youngest guy. But, um, I kind of matured that way. Um, and so I, you know, I was in a bunch of rock bands, you know, and then I kind of softened out to the acoustic guitar and um, was in a few other bands. And I think uh, that kind of music speaks to me a little bit more just because it's more challenging. Mm -hmm. And if you make a mistake, you know it <laughs> oh, yeah. rather than a guitar, a electric guitar with effects and everything. So, um, and I just found it a little bit more challenging. So I decided to go that route because it's not easy and uh, it's something you can take with you. But I mean, I still pick up the guitar once in a while, you know, not as much as I should, but right. uh, me too. yeah, but yeah. It, I mean, it's such a good way to think for me or to not think to clear my mind and just, 
not think and just let it, let it go and, and play. And it's uh, like almost like a form of like meditation or something mm-hmm. for me. You know, Absolutely. Get. Well, everyone told me, you know, you, you picked the absolute hardest guy to start learning <laughs> in mm-hmm. Dave Matthews when you're yeah. trying to stretch your finger out into yeah. these weird yeah. places. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I want to learn crash. I'm like, oh, that's yeah. or tripping yeah. deadlies or, yeah. you know what, then you start to get them down and to be able to jam with one or two people yeah. Just again, at, at home, uh, I've not been on stage or anything like you have. Yeah, yeah. Kind of like a childhood little dream would be to do that yeah. at one point. But, mm-hmm. you know, just to be able to do that and actually feel like you're making that music and kind of, again, it was neat for me because I feel like I was able to connect a little bit more to the music. Like uh, some music you hear sounds good. Their music's always been kind of like, it's kind of like hit my soul at different points, whatever I was yep. feeling. And, and then seeing them live on stage, anyone that's ever been to a live show uh, mm-hmm. with, with Dave Matthews Band, you see how much they just truly love uh, what they're doing and mm-hmm. the passion they have to make music. And you look around the crowd and there's all these different people and personalities just all, you know, vibing up with each other and, and laid back and relaxed. I always look around and take a breath in and be like, this is amazing. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's, put something together that takes all these different backgrounds and brings mm-hmm. us all together for, for some, you know, a couple hours, just good music and, and, and good times. So mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. kind of what I got out of it. So, Oh, for sure. For sure. And of course I would always try to drag people to see them, you know, and Oh, it worked most of the time, but they go, Oh, I don't, you know, I've heard the, the radio songs. Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> it's a different um, experience. A funny story is with Suze. When I met Suze, Oh, it was funny. Cause I, I told her, I said, well, I'm, I'm in a band. She goes, uh, you know, and I didn't know she was hanging out with, you know, big orange cone, all, all these other bands, you know, that were big um, cover bands in New Jersey, you know, phenomenon down the shore. Right. So, um, I said, yeah, I'm an original band. She goes, oh, an original band. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, not a cover band. I go, oh, boy. So, and she goes, well, what's your favorite band? I go, well, D- Dave Matthews. She goes, oh, man. You know, okay. So, what do you know? You know, uh, Dave Matthews was our wedding song. So, yeah. she came around, you know, she started to really like him when we'd go out to the concerts. But um, that was a tough win, you know, with her. You know, I think oh, I'm going to be impressive here. Mm-hmm. I'm in a band, you know, I'm an original band and she, she's been around the block, you know, in, in seeing bands and seeing talented musicians. So she goes, okay, well, I'll see you play and then we'll, we'll, yeah, I'll let you know if you're good. Not. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. That is not impressive. Just coming out of your mouth. I want to see it. So it does not surprise me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For sure. So. so since you bring that up, I mean, you know, uh, throughout high school, I was reading up a little bit on some of your, uh, on some of the show notes, you were uh, maybe started off doing well in school, then, you know, maybe did not do so well. Like what happened throughout your school before we get to Sue's? Like you had a, yeah. I was reading like you had a little bit of a good start and then you kind of yeah. like went off the rails a little bit. Was that because yeah. you were in a band and, and, and out up late at night or into girls or what was going on? No, it was, it was m- much of it was, well, it was, I guess it was just a complacency. So I, I guess I still have, uh, hopefully I don't have that much of an a- attitude about it as I did then. But um, I, I, I kind of felt like it, when I went into high school, I was an all college prep. I was, I was all set, you know, bright kid and going in. And then I just sat down in these classes and I just, I couldn't concentrate on anything. It wasn't, for whatever reason, I, I, I didn't care what I was learning. And, and I, I just, you know, was not engaged. And um, I started to cut class, you know, a lot. Mm-hmm. And um, I, you know, made some decisions that I shouldn't have. And, you know, I, and, it, and I paid for them, you know, I, and part of it, yeah, was that attitude, you know, I'm, I'm in a band, you know, that we're going to take off. And I, I don't need this, uh, I probably won't finish this. And it was, uh, and looking back, it was probably foolish. Um, uh, I, I, you know, all my, all the, the whole, my whole, uh, high school career, I was, it was pretty rough. Um, I didn't really go to class. I wasn't engaged. Um, uh, one of our, our vice principal, he was going to retire and he sat me down and he said, I know your sisters, you know, and they're amazing. And I said, yeah, they are. And he said, what's going on with you? You know? you got to go to class. And I said, I know I I do. And he says, well, you have all these cuts and I'm going to tear them up. And he said, I'm retiring. And you know, you, you really don't have a path to get out of here on time. So you're either going to have to make a choice to not come back next year, or you're going to have to get all A's and you're going to have to, um, 
take these credits and, and, and somehow graduate, you know? And I really, that took me back and I said, wow, I, I got to do this. So I went to school early and I stayed late my senior year and the whole year I got all straight A's, you know? And I, I kind of felt foolish at the end going, well, it, it would have been pretty easy for me to just take these classes seriously. And, mm -hmm. but getting out of school, you know, I, I was on my own. I mean, I, I didn't, you know, I really didn't have a, a nest. I didn't have anything to really fall down on. I didn't, I, I was, college was not happening. So, um, you know, I had to really, really fight at that point to, and, and really strive to do well and, and, and work my way up that ladder, um, harder than someone else that academically, you know, you know, cared and, and applied themselves. So, um, that, that's when my life changed. That's when I realized that, okay, you're being a kid and now you're, now you're grown up and, um, you know, what a good decision is versus a bad decision. So, um, from that point on, I just, I became engaged and very, uh, just, I, I thought clearly I was humbled greatly and, um, opened my ears and look toward to, to learn whatever I was doing and do it the best that I could, you know? Yeah. Well, I think that's a skill that a lot of people have trouble with, uh, understanding is when you're going through adversity like that, or you have a failure of, you know, sometimes you're going to have that uh, person in your life, like you did with your, uh, vice principal pulling you aside. And I think that's a, a good reminder to anyone that's uh, in someone's life, you, you may not realize the the importance of the role that you make, or maybe you're holding back wanting to say something. I think you, you should, as a, if you're in a leadership role or a mentor role to yeah. try to connect with people, especially our youth and try to pull them aside and give them some lessons. But sometimes it takes, you know, falling on your face a little bit or someone making you aware of it before you make a change. Some people would still be resistant of that and have to fall down many more times. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think, you know, through your experience with some sports and growing up and, and, and learning how to kind of push through as the, the smaller guy or the unathletic guy or mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all those things is, is going to give you the experience where you had a chance to, I think, you know, someone held up a mirror to you and you didn't really like what you saw and you had to have an honest conversation with yourself and be like, oh, I'm not a kid anymore. Yeah, it's, it's time to grow up. And that's a, I remember that's a tough transition, you know, yeah. you just, you kind of want to have all the freedom as a child, but all the, you know, you know, freedom as an adult with none of the responsibility and it doesn't work that way. You know, no. so. and there were always glimmers, you know, of, wow, I, I achieved that. And, oh, we did this and, oh, we played that well. And, oh, that's a great song. And, you know, it, for, in my life, it just, the, the success didn't always happen at the same time. But in that point in my life, you know, other things were good besides school, but school, just, it just wasn't, that was, on, on the wayside that I, I didn't care about. So, um, but I should have, so it, um, you, knowing what's really right and what to focus on is so important, you know, because, you know, you could be failing, you know, at your career, but come home and be a really good cook, mm -hmm. you know, and cook a really good dinner. But so what, you know, you, you, where's your focus. So, mm -hmm. um, that moment I it kind of clicked and I went, wow, I, okay. So I, I'm totally focused over here and I'm doing and things are happening, but I really need to get my focus right here and um, take all those, those, you know, the, the just working harder than someone else to, you know, that kind of attitude and, and listening, you know, and, and achieving and it worked out, you know? Yeah. Well, it's moments like that though. I think that you really have to dig in deep and realize that, you know, you're not stuck, that you can make a change. I think the thing that maybe people do or don't pick up on what you just said is that you were at a point where you're basically going to be almost kicked out of school, not graduating yeah. school. Yeah. And you were at a lower point on, on the education level, even if other oh, yeah. things are going well, but you had the ability to immediately make a, a change like in a moment mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. turn that entire situation around. And yeah. often when we are in those moments, whether it's in a relationship or with business or whatever, it's very easy to let your ego come into play and make you feel awful and miserable and there's no way out or you go through yeah. the, the woe is me phase and you just sure. feel bad for yourself. But mm -hmm. typically, usually when you just kind of like 
you know, sit down with yourself and go, all right, I'm making a change. I'm changing my focus from that point forward. You have control over the path. And so no, no matter like what you're going through or how dark it may be, um, you know, speak to some people around you and, you know, pull out a pen and paper and figure out what you want to do with your life and start taking some action to actually, don't just think about it. Right. You have to actually sit down and say, what would step one be? How about I just yeah. do that today? You know what I mean? Just mm-hmm. start taking small little steps. Cause if you're trying, you're way ahead of people that are not even stepping off the couch. You know what I mean? Exactly. Exactly. So, and, you know, some people excel, you know, some people have great memory retention. Some people have, you know, either, their literacy, they're, they're, they read quickly, you know, and they just comprehend, you know, I, um, I didn't, I, 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 I always, the school told me I had that problem, but I, I know I didn't have that problem because if I was interested in something, mm-hmm. I didn't have a problem. I could read it quickly. I could remember because I was interested. Exactly. So, well, that's a problem to, I have with school also. Yeah, you sound yeah. like I do, like I sat there wanting to do this my whole life, you know, own mm-hmm. a martial arts school. Yeah. And not everyone is meant to sit in a chair for six or seven mm-hmm. hours a day and, and just yeah. be preached to. And unfortunately, right. not everyone is a good educator. But those the yeah. teachers that were able to put the book down and stand in front mm-hmm. of a class and connect with you and engage mm-hmm. you, those mm-hmm. are the classes I could listen and, and remember mm-hmm. everything. But to yeah. say, you, you got to read this book. That you're not interested in, you know, because yeah. that's the way it's the whole education system, I think, needs to be yeah. around because it's not for everybody. It no, really it is. isn't. It really isn't. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, so we, we uh, you managed to get through school. You're on your own. Yeah. Um, you know, just real quick prior to uh, meeting Suze, had you mm-hmm. had had you had a lot of long term relationships prior to then or, or no, no, not 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 really. Um, I, you know, I here and there, you know, of course, but um, I was. I was deeply uh, rooted in um, projects and, and, and work. I, I always had something going on. I, I had these, all these little companies that I would try to kind of boost off the ground um, from boy, a young age. And um, you know, I, I uh, didn't want to kind of invest time or I guess I just said, I just don't have time for this long-term relationship or um you know, and, but, uh, I had friends of mine sat me down and said, boy, Ken, it's time. You know, you're at the time when I met Suze, I was 30 years old, you know? So, um, I wasn't, wasn't that young and, you know, and most of my friends were either married or, you know, in serious relationships and I just wasn't. So, um, I kind of went along and said, well, okay, you know, I'll, I'll, I, I guess it is time, you know, not having, Oh, I kind of, I'll show you attitude when it doesn't work out. You know, mm-hmm. but when I met her, I mean, I, I knew, you know, uh, immediately that, uh, that she was the one, you know, I, I knew, um, and, uh, you know, that, that feeling vanished, you know? So what were you doing at the time? You said you had a lot of different careers that you were bouncing yeah. between companies. Like, yeah, uh, you were out on your own post uh, high school. Mm-hmm. What yeah. was, your, what was your thing leading up? And then you could tell me how you guys okay. met. Yeah. So, um, so I, I mean, uh, right out of high, so out of high school, I was, um, I, in high school, I worked for a dealer, car dealership and I, uh, mowed their lawn. Uh, I was a, a landscaping guy and, um, I worked my way up to the detail department and then I worked my way up to become like a mid level, uh, mechanic. And, um, that was interesting. You know, I, I was pretty good at that. You know, I was pretty handy, but, um, I, just didn't see, I, I just didn't want that to be my future. I mean, something just, you know, I, I thought, well, once I know everything, all these components of a car, uh, I'm just going to be making repairs all day. I can't really create anything. And I think that's when I kind of started to realize something that was meant for me to do is to in the creation realm. So, um, I went to computer school and, um, you know, kind of, again, I wasn't too engaged, but I was just kind of getting, because you're reading books on windows, mm. you know, operating systems and you're just like, Oh, this is awful, but you know, it'll pay more and then maybe I can start a business, you know? So, um, but Pfizer came in pharmaceutical company in the middle of our school and they said, well, we want to hire some people to do a temporary job, a six month job. And we want these people to travel around Canada and you know do like a help desk kind of you know fix computers out there so i was free as a bird so i i requested that and 
you know, that little six month job became like a I don't know, 11 or 12 year career with Pfizer. Wow. And uh, it took me a lot of places. And um, I, I was able to manage my own way. And I think I was given um, the freedom to um, have an effective team my way. And, um, you know, we, it, it helped me out just climb the ranks, you know, up to a director level um, until, you know, uh, Pfizer moved their IT department to, to Costa Rica and basically put everything on the cloud. Um, and that was kind of around the time I met Suze. So uh, I think I was still working for Pfizer at the time. Okay. Um, but I, you know, and, and the small businesses, I mean, they didn't really matter that I, I but I always was thinking of ideas. Uh, I made candles. Um, I, um, I had this company called Tunique where uh, a guy that I would work with would draw caricatures of people digitally. And, you know, we would do like little wedding, little, you know, a, a wedding board, things like that. And, you know, I was always doing side things above and beyond what I was doing as my career. So um, the career was really on autopilot. I was making my way up through the ranks, but I also had my focus someplace else. And there wasn't much else to really consume my attention beyond that. But, um, and then, you know. You know, it's a constant pursuit, it sounds like, of, mm -hmm. of trying to figure out who you are and what you want to mm -hmm. do and not settling. Yeah. Yeah. That mo that motivates you to keep. You see what I think. What people don't understand is they try the one thing. You tried many, and the one yeah. thing fails, and they never do it again because people right. can't deal with failure. And it's like you mm -hmm. have to kind of learn to mm -hmm. accept failure. It yeah. has to be a part of the equation. Just like mm -hmm. again, throwing it back to what I do. You mm -hmm. know, you're gonna spar. You're gonna get punched in the face. Yep. It's just gonna happen. I don't know many yeah. world champions, world some of the best fighters in the world mm -hmm. that come out of their fight unscathed. It happens, but it's super rare. But even yeah. at the end of a match, you look at the guy that's the world champion or the female, and they look beat up, and yep. somehow they they won. So it's like, all right, listen, you're gonna get into a fight. Mm -hmm. First thing I want you all to accept, you're getting punched in the face. So mm -hmm. there's that. You know what I mean? You're yep. gonna lose. You're gonna get. But that's one thing I love about what we do. It's like you're you're, you're you constantly have to fail because there's people mm -hmm. that are always better than you. Yep. So you you have no choice but to accept that as part of it. Like you stop mm -hmm. hating it and you're like, you start appreciating the talent of the person that was able to do that to you. Instead mm -hmm. of just getting angry, you're like, man, if I keep at this, I'm gonna be as good as you one day. Mm -hmm. And and maybe people tried one or two of the projects you did. Maybe they're sitting in an office listening right now and they hate their job and they're 12 years into it and they have all these ideas, but mm -hmm. they're afraid they're gonna fail. And to me, it's just like opening my business or starting a podcast, like, you know, yeah. maybe, maybe you will, but wouldn't you rather try something mm -hmm. and succeed or fail? But at least you know, you, yeah. you don't have to dream about it and wonder what if, what if I ever did this? Mm -hmm. and it seems like you had this constant, it's, this is part of your personality I'm learning about today in the yeah. podcast all the way back from you as a child, mm -hmm. constantly just pursuing and reinventing because you felt something inside your gut that just mm -hmm. wasn't quite satisfied yet, but you, the key thing is you kept, you kept after it and you didn't get that's up. right. Yeah, that's right. And then yeah. during, during this quest mm -hmm. and again, in your mind, you decided, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for, for a relationship. Mm -hmm. How far, how long after making that decision did, did she enter your life and, and how'd you guys? Oh, boy. Yeah. Um, I mean, we, we, it's funny because we, we did meet online, but, Boy, we have so many connections. A lot of our friends know each other, you know, no. Um, so I, I, a friend of mine said, all right, we're going to create this online profile for him. And I was like, begrudgingly, I said, oh, okay. You know, and I don't know. I, I was, you know, d dating some people in, in, in New York and, and boy, it was, I got tired of that just going in all the time in and out and, you know, from New Jersey. So I said, okay, this isn't really working out. And, you know, I saw her profile and, uh, we, I guess we expressed interest in each other and I finally, you know, uh, said, Oh, let's meet up. And, uh, we, we met up at Tiffany's in okay. Pinebrook, <laughs> which is interesting. That's funny. And, um, yeah. And we, uh, I mean, that was it. That was it. I mean, we, uh, gosh, we went out on that date and then, you know, we went next time we went into the city and after that, I mean, we were inseparable. So we, uh, I think we, we met in, uh, in May of, tw of, I don't know, 20, 2010 or so. Uh, and, uh, we were engaged in the next year. Mm. Uh, and then we were married the next year, you know? So we just, 
I, I mean, there wasn't, we didn't take too long to, to, uh, to get through to that point, you know, and, um, I guess, uh, and, and she was very supportive of everything that I was doing, especially, uh, what, what was going on in my life. I mean, she had a lot going on in her life as well at that time. So we were both like super supportive of each other and just completely not non judgmental of what you sure you want to do that or, you know, what, what the, the case is. Um, she had just overcome cancer at that time. She probably a year, um, uh, in remission at the time that I met her, you know, so she was still, you know, she, uh, feeling it, but she was, she was getting out there and it's like, I'm grateful that she did, you know, mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, we sat down in New York on our second date because the first date, we didn't really talk about that, but the second date, she kind of brought it up and I thought I was just super interested and I, I was just like, wow, I, you know, you, you defeated this. I mean, what a hero you are, you know, how, how mm -hmm. strong you are and, and just, man, I, I just couldn't get over it. And I'd all these questions and she was just, she was grateful that I didn't go, Oh, you know, I'm out. I'm yeah. out. Yeah. I don't, yeah. you know, but, um, that also, so if people are scared of failure and I hope you get her on to explain some of the thing that she's been through in her life. If you listen to her story, you'll, you won't be able you know, afraid of failure again. Mm -hmm. Um, you'll do anything because you never know. And you know, you don't want to be that, you know, that cliche old person going, Oh, I should have done this and that. And I didn't, you know, I've heard that too many times and I'd rather try something and, and, and see if that fits and keep trying and trying and trying until you find what's right for you. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, and I, I just encourage anyone to do that, um, carefully. I mean, if you, if you are that type of person that can learn and listen and be humble and, ask people questions and, uh, get mentors. Um, then maybe you're the type of person that can lead others one day, you know? Mm -hmm. So oh, it's, I think a key for any successful relationship. You, so you guys are together about eight years now. Is that right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, yeah. A little over. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, uh, similarly, and, and Suze was there at the time, uh, Tiff and I, uh, this October are together as a couple for 20 years, which is crazy wow. to even admit wow. out loud yeah. and married for 16. But, yeah. um, wow. when, when, uh, we, we met in Montclair, which is where mm -hmm. I met your wife, uh, mm -hmm. as well. Um, mm -hmm. I was 21 and Tiff was 19, still in the heart of being, uh, you know, sorority girls and, mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you, when you know, you know, kind of a deal, same type of a thing. We met at a late night party after homecoming mm -hmm. and it was the after, after, after party. Like I think we first yeah. this party at two o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And Tiff was one of the first people I saw long story short. We ended up talking to you know, what you expect to do at a fraternity party at two in the morning is to meet someone when you're, you know, I know I was wasted, yeah. but and uh, sit in the corner and talk for two hours and learn yeah. about each other. And, and then she went to the bathroom, came back and gave me a kiss. And, and we've mm -hmm. been together every day since. Wow. And there was a lot of our friends that were uh, kind of like brushing us off because we six months in were talking about wanting to get married and things yeah. like that. And they thought, we're so young, we're throwing our life away. And, and Suze from early on was one of those people that was just absolutely supportive of yeah. the relationship. Even at the yeah. time, our organization didn't talk as much uh, at that time, you know, they, they related with other fraternities and, um, even though we weren't like the, the, the cool guys to them, but the time she didn't have that ego, it was mm -hmm. like, Oh, I don't care who you're from. You're cool. Let's hang out. Mm -hmm. Even when we decided to get off campus and she was living with her, uh, sisters at the time, Suze and their, their other sister Viv at the time, she's like, you know, come on in. She wasn't like, no, this is supposed to only be a girl thing. You know, right. we, we just, she just has, you know, I don't want to go off just on, just on her, but just my two cents to add to it. She's yeah. always been one of the warmest, you know, most considerate, caring friends. I had a chance to even work with her, yeah. uh, you know, at, at Hula Hands and mm -hmm. have had mm -hmm. all these different experiences. And when we found out that, that she had cancer, I mean, we were just devastated. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember even going up to, you know, she invited a few friends to to have dinner with all of us and talk about everything and just, mm -hmm. just kind of thinking about her every day and, 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 and hoping that it would it'd work out well. And yeah. thankfully she's such a strong fighter and, oh, and, yeah. and pushed yeah. through and have overcome so much. So I'd, I'd love to have her on sometime, but yeah. I just bring all this up because, 
you know, another, you know, thing to become a life's black belt, you talked about all these adversities you overcome is, you know, maintaining a relationship or a marriage that long and all these different adversities you have to overcome is challenging. Throw mm -hmm. businesses and careers and cancer and things like that in the mix. Yeah. Yeah. It's tough. It's some of the things that people don't talk about day in and day out. Like you might have your social media marriage, but you know, behind closed doors is it's tough. So to yeah. to make it through eight years, you know, thus far and, mm -hmm. and to be as happy as you are, because I see your face light up when you just oh, yeah. mention your name. Mm -hmm. What is it? What what is it that that allows you guys to be successful as a couple? Uh oh, and, and some other couples just can't can't swing it it's probably the, the freedom to, um, to, to be who we are individually, you know, um, we're with each other. We're very easygoing. Um, we, you know, we, and we're supportive of each other. You know, I know she's extremely smart and she's very good at what she does at work, you know, and I know that she makes good decisions. So, I don't have to like pick and prod every little thing. And she doesn't, she does the same to me. She just, you know, what, how can I be, how can I help you? Do you need help with anything? I will help you, you know, that, that type of a thing. And we're really that way with each other instead of saying, Oh, I, I wish you hadn't done that or, or whatever. And if, if there is something to, to bring up, we bring it up and we talk through it and we get through it. So um, yeah, it isn't easy. I mean um, there's been, you know, some, I mean, we've, we've gone through, uh, we got married. I lost my job. Um, and I lost my job when we were kind of making a decision to come to Texas and move to Texas. And, and, you know, that was a huge knock, you know, because we had already put, you know, a deposit down on a house and here we're leaving and, and we have no clue what my future is. She's still not feeling the best, you know, at that time. And, we're leaving our friends. We're leaving our life. She's leaving her parents, you know, and, uh, boy, it was, it was tough. It was tough, but, um, we just persevered. I mean, we got through it. We, um, you know, we we're just help each other out and, and, and made good decisions, you know, and luckily mm -hmm. we're where we're at, you know, but you know, the story is not it, but we'll always hit bumps, you know, no matter how good things are, you still, you know, there could be this or that that could happen and you just kind of yeah. figure out a good way to work it out and you manage your, your relationship. Well, you have to, and you have to listen. I mean, I, she listens more than I do. Believe me, I'm, mm -hmm. I have to learn and I have to like reserve myself a little bit more than she does, but I try and I'm, I'm aware of it. And I know I make mistakes and I'll tell her, I'll say, you know, that was just very, um, uh, I wasn't using my emotion there. I was really being logical. And right. sometimes that hurts. And I, I need to understand that and kind of check that. Well, it sounds like, you know, again, to reiterate to people that mm -hmm. that don't maybe have that relationship is that it's you're never going to find somebody and it's going to be perfect. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a constant work, just like any other relationship that you have in your life. Sure. Yep. It takes both people being committed. But I think you talked about uh, trust. That's a huge thing. Trusting each oh, yeah. other to be their own person, allowing people to be their own person. Mm -hmm. But also, just like you've mentioned with uh, work and things like that, you have to learn how to communicate with with someone that literally thinks differently. Like I'm not saying right. this to say we're, we're equal, but we think very differently. That's the whole men are from Mars, women are from That's Venus. Right. I'm not sure That's if you right. ever read that book, but... I think it's a great one because yeah. you know, they kind of frame the whole conversation. Like imagine that men and women were on different planets and they finally meet each other. You're not mm -hmm. going to be mad that you don't understand what the other is saying. You just understand that we speak a different language. Right. And if you care enough about one another, I have to learn how to communicate in the way that she knows how to mm -hmm. interpret best and vice versa. Mm -hmm. She has to, and it takes two people committed to, to caring enough to do that and not just go, Hey, this is the way I am. And if you don't like it, screw you. Right. You right. have to, you have to take a step back and swallow your pride and compromise. And it sounds mm -hmm. like as long as you maintain that, I, I think, mm -hmm. you know, uh, it'll, it'll create even more success and you'll grow closer and closer together. And, mm -hmm. you know, 20 years later, we still have our bumps, but our, our fights are way different than they used to be. Sure. You know, we sure. sit down, they don't get as big. We go, Hey, let's check ourselves for a second. Mm -hmm. Here's what I'm trying to get across. I, I acknowledge how you feel. It's, you, mm -hmm. you almost hear yourself arguing and it seems a lot, a lot more mature. You know yeah. what I mean? Not always, yeah. but <laughs> well, and, and more often than not. 
Right, right. And, and if you apologize or something like that, mean it, you know, really mean it and understand. Don't just go, OK, I'm sorry. Just understand why you're sorry and, uh, you know, talk through it. Boy, I, you know, I could have done this differently. She does the same thing. She's really easygoing. And that's I mean, maybe I, I maybe that's good for me. You know, I I, I know I'm fortunate. I, I really am fortunate. I know she's like she's the best. So mm-hmm. I um, she's super supportive of everything that I do right. and understanding, you know, so I, I mean, I'm a lucky guy. I yeah. really am. You, so. you are. And it's awesome to, 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 yeah. to acknowledge that. And again, uh, you know, to, to see someone so happy and I, and I yeah. said, I've, I've saw it from, from her end and heard her say just, you know, even when she was out visiting, mm-hmm. um, you know, a few months back, six months yeah. back, whatever it yeah. was. Yeah. Um, she had nothing but amazing things mm. to, to say about you. So to know how much that you guys love each other is, uh, as a good friend who cares about her greatly, it's, it's, it's awesome to know that she's, she's found that in her life and for sure. uh, yeah. very, very thankful that she has that yeah. and that she's doing and that she's doing well and is, is kicking this cancer's butt. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, yeah. And, and yeah. right now, like it, it took, it took a long time for her to finally just like now she is pain free, you know, everything, uh, she's, it's just the weight has been lifted, you know, and it, I think just time took to, to get her completely healed. I mean, she went through the ringer and bad, you know, and um, she, it, it takes a toll on you emotionally, physically. And, you know, now it's just, it's great to see her because she just says, says like, I feel like I myself before anything happened mm. for the first time. And it's really cool to wow. see, you know, and she's Amazing. just, you can, the light is, is brighter and brighter with her. So I tell her, just aim yourself, just go like be, you know, and then she's got, got this great job and she's doing really well at it. And just like, keep going, you know? Well, well, speaking, speaking of, of great jobs mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. constantly bouncing up and down through businesses and trying to yeah. find the, the creative juices that flow, yeah. why don't you take me a little bit more currently to okay. not going on? Cause uh, from from afar and on social media, I see what you got going on. But uh, you know, tell me a little bit more about this company that you've created and what's going on with it. Yeah, so we are a woodworking company. We build uh, custom furniture, um, and uh, we my, my passion is bringing in species of wood from all over the world, different times, um, and just presenting it in its form. Um, we have a lot of interesting clients. We do, uh, we have residential clients, we have commercial clients, we have we work with interior designers and architects, we do restaurants, hotels. Um, and you know, when I, when I started, it was just, um, like a very basic table that I'd make and, um, people that move to Texas need larger tables because generally you have a larger house than, I mean, we tripled the size of our house when we moved here. So we needed a lot of furniture. So, um, and I've really parlayed something very basic into something very custom and, um, you know, not one project is the same with the last. Um, and we really get our customers involved. We invite them into the process. We figure out what their likes, dislikes are, and man, do we challenge ourselves to just do things that we haven't done before. So, it's exciting, but it's also, you know, we have to make sure that we really um, make good decisions, obviously, because it affects other people. And uh, we've been doing a great job at that. We, I have just a great team that, that's working for me right now. Um, I'm fortunate that, that I, I, my friend from childhood, my first best friend, he's working with me now. You know, he moved to Texas and uh, uh, we're working together every day. It's amazing. Um, I work with my father every day, which is great. Uh, my uncle, he's there probably two, three times a week working. And it's just, we have a blast, you know, we have so much fun and we're, you know, we're growing and becoming more and more successful. So where did um, all this carpentry skill come from? Um, I, I, I think I've, you know, I, I was a mechanic, so I did that. And, um, so I kind of work, I've been, I've worked with my hands a lot. Uh, I think I, I, I we have a lot of engineers in the family, but I think I've, like music, I kind of understand, I guess, how to build. Um, I flipped a house 
uh, in, in, in Sparta in 2020 or 2007. And I pretty much did most of the work myself with another business partner. Uh, and I learned a lot about wood. I learned about movement. I learned, um, some of the, just the routine skills that you'd have to know when we were moving to Texas, Sue's said, well, I want a rustic table. I want, you know, a rustic dining table. So we found a company that actually made tables uh, custom. And I was pretty interested in how they worked. And I was looking at them and I just was thinking, man, I can do that. You know, I, I think I can do that pretty well. I, I'm just thinking in my mind and really waiting for the opportunity. And we moved to Texas and lo and behold, they, they were late with a delivery or something happened or wasn't the right size or something. And, we ended up not getting the table. And I told Susan, I said, well, I'll build it for you. And she said, yeah, sure you will. I said, no, I, I think I can do it. So I built the table and she went, wow, you know, wow, this is, this is great. Can you build another one? I said, yeah, sure. And I built another one for another area of our house. And then uh, one of my cousins says, well, why don't you try to put it online? See if anyone, you know, so I, I put one on, I just took the picture of the first one that I did and I put that online on Craigslist. And I got five responses. So I ended up building five more tables and selling those. So I, that kind of put the light on like, wow, there's a need here for custom furniture. Or at that point, it wasn't really custom. It was this table, this width or this length. That, that was it. This color. Um, and that was about it. Now we're just leagues and bounds from there. But, um, you know, I started kind of working out of my garage while looking for a job, I was interviewing with Baylor to be in their project management program or whatever. And um, I just lost more and more interest in that. And I was just dedicating more and more time into the furniture business. And, and then it became a, a thing, you know, and um, we went, I rented out a shop and we bought a lot of industrial tools and just went at it. Um, and grew, just keep reinvesting into the business, buying more tools, uh, getting, starting to learn about different wood and bringing that in from overseas, from Africa or Australia or Hawaii or, you know, um, uh, we have uh, uh, oak from France that's 600 years old. That was an old farmhouse in France, you know, stuff mm -hmm. like that. And it's, uh, we just have some just crazy species of wood that we bring in and uh, work with and they're, they're gorgeous, you know? So, um, you know, that's the long and short of it. So we're always looking into what really drives us and motivates us and what's kind of a neat thing to build and create and try to get our customers and clients to go that route and instead of picking the same old thing every time. So, so how long, how long have you had the company going for? Um, I, well, I started doing the furniture, uh, in, in 2012 and 2012 okay. is when we, we got married in July and then in September we were living in, uh, in uh, Texas. And then in October I started the business. Wow. So we had one, uh, business with family members of ours from like 2012 to 2014 and that we, we dissolved that and we kind of went separate ways. And then I started KS Woodcraft in January of 2015 and to, to present. So, uh, you know, we're going strong. Um, and you know, we're, we're just trying to control the growth, but sure. you know, we have, now how many, how big is the company now? Do you have a lot of employees? Yeah, we have, um, let's see, probably eight or nine people every day that are, that are there working. Um, you know, again, my, my father's there, he, my uncle. Um, but you know, we do have probably five employees, uh, besides them that that are you know either doing the front office or accounting and then we have a bunch of builders and finishers that that uh, work in the shop with me so um, I kind of rotate with from I do a lot of building but then I also have to do a lot of office work and of course clients and traveling and things like that but um, I, I can't not be out of the shop it's just I love it. You know, sure love now it. are you are you just servicing your local area or are you actually starting to ship around yeah, we go uh, just nationwide. We're, uh, it's very hard. So today, we, you know, we're shipping a table to uh, Miami. Um, it's a 10-foot by 4-foot table. We had to build this big pallet, and we freighted it out. 
um, with their forklifts and lifted onto the truck and everything. But we, we do work all over the country. Um, it, ideally it would be, it would just stay in Texas or the Dallas Metroplex, but, um, we're open to, you know, That's any awesome. period. Of You're already getting a national interest. That's amazing. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 So, um, we, we do AT&T work for them. We do work for Hilton. Uh, we've done work for Starbucks, Solera, um, you know, a lot of big companies and they're starting to put us in other regions. So we're, we're starting to send tables out. We do a lot in New York, New York city. And that's great because I could go out there a lot, you know, and, and, um, meet with some friends while I'm, while I'm, um, doing some business. I'm in California a lot in the LA market. Um, and, uh, you know, Miami and Chicago. So we're, and again, we, we only have a certain limited space to work. So we're really trying to control. We don't want to get, you know, to grow too, too quickly, uh, grow yeah. too much. Yeah. Because that could be really detrimental to our business. So, um, we've done a really good job at controlling it and, turning things out at a reasonable, you know, finish rate. But, uh, that's a tough, again, a, a tough thing for us is to, you know, work like a Tetris game with sure. wood and boards and tables and everything else. So. so you don't want to grow too fast, but what do you see? Like, you know, what's your, you know, one, three, five yeah. year plan? Like what, what's coming up next for uh, KS Woodcraft? Well, what, what's coming up next is definitely finding, uh, buying a, either buying a property and building a, a, a building on it. We're probably looking to do about a 10,000 square foot building. Um, we're, so we're, uh, I've been talking to the mayor in our town and trying to figure out where the ideal place would be that we can, build because it's light industrial and our town has, you know, uh, a yes area and a no area, you know, where, where we should be. So I'm trying to figure out what's, what's best there. Uh, we may end up in a neighboring town. Um, but we're really actively trying to make that happen. Uh, I would, I had wanted to do it this year, uh, unless we find something pre-built, I don't see that happening anymore. It'll probably be early next year, but, um, I'm, dead set on getting this uh, larger because then I can hire more people. I'll have more storage and I can really expand the business the way that we want to. Um, we have a lot of special craftsmen that work for us that I guess we need more space and to be in, in order to really open up what we're actually, actually capable of doing. We do it now, but it just takes up so much space. So once we have, once we can kind of relax and expand, um, that'll be great. So, um, that's kind of my next step. Um, and then, you know, maybe, maybe three, five years, we'll talk about production. Um, right now we don't, we don't really get into production. We don't have SKUs. Um, I try not to at least because we like to kind of keep it different and mm -hmm. figure out again, it's figuring out, you know, what, what defines us. Um, we uh, usually have a customer that comes in and show us something and gives us an inspiration. And then we'll, we'll kind of design something around that. Um, and I love doing that. And all the guys love doing that. And, um, but it would be great to figure out something nuanced that's ours that we can maybe start to produce and make in, you know, regular sizes and have a protocol for it rather than, because when you work with wood, you have to build jigs and you have to have, and some of these things you do once and you throw it away because you're done with that table. It'd be great to have from a business aspect, a certain few tables that we have jigs for that we can kind of filter out and keep those jigs and, and, right. and build that way. Cause it's a good use of time. But um, again, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, the, it's the, the, want in our and us to be different and that's what sets us different is yeah i think that's important to, yeah so um going from custom work to production i'm that i'm wavering on i don't know and it's how big do you want to get mm -hmm. you know um how many more people do we want to employ you know how many more risks are there with equipment and you know uh, uh machines and and you know and and bringing in materials and you know things like that i mean there's there's a lot of logistics that are involved and um, you know, there's only one of me. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's just bringing people in that can actually take these tasks and 
you know, know how to, how to look at something, price it, get inspired by it, you know, and, and still keep the name to me. I, that's the tough part is, sure. you know, giving it out and, and making it evolve and, and bringing some more great minds in because I, I have a lot to learn still. So, um, and the builder that we have now is just amazing. And um, I'm a self-taught guy and he's very, he, he may be self-taught, but boy, he's, he's regimented and he does things, you know, right. By, by the book. And it's, you know, some of the things that I would do, the result might be the same, but he has uh, a great way of doing it that I'm learning. And wow. You know, this is great. So more of him getting more from our talent like that in our shop would be great, you know, and keeping their interest in doing those things that are just amazing and not just the routine stuff that anyone can do, you know? So, I mean, the fact that you started something that's already getting national recognition and is this just by having an online presence? Like how has your name gotten out nationally? Um, I guess word of mouth. Uh, we're, yeah, I mean, we're, we're fortunate that, um, you know, I, I've networked a great deal and, um, I think, I think I, it really inspires me to talk about it. And I think people kind of get at, put at ease. Like if I'm going to sit down, all right, let's make your, ta- let's make your conference table and here's what we can do. They, they have kind of a comfort and we, I, you know, I bend over backwards to try to really give everything we can and every client as much attention and, and care as mm-hmm. I can. And, um, that pays off in dividends because you have interior designers that'll call their friends and say, Hey, this guy's going to take care of you. You know, he's mm-hmm. going to make sure. And if he can't do it, he'll tell you, but you know, they have a good team. They're going to have a great product. Uh, it's going to be really well built and you're going to love it. So, um, you know, and once we've gotten to a bigger scale with, AT&T, things like that. Well, now you can kind of bring that and speak with another company and say, well, look what we're doing for them. Mm -hmm. You know, and, you know, we've kind of just, uh, just found our way. It's hard to explain it. it, I think the the key of what you said is that you guys are offering something that's not Mm -hmm. as common anymore, but used to be very common. You're offering a personal experience. Uh, We live in a world of Amazon where there's no the personality anymore you touch yeah. a button on your phone a box shows up you never even have an interaction really with a human that's right but to have someone like yourself that's able to actually connect and show someone they care and make them feel special i mean i still enjoy if i go to my local bagel shop and they're like hey eric what's going on i'm like oh you know who i am that's that's yeah. cool yeah. other places are just like all right let's go next 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 yeah. next you yeah. become a, a machine and mm-hmm. it's one thing, uh, you know, as a martial arts school owner, in addition mm-hmm. to teaching, you know, good quality stuff and having a good school, it's also taken a step of making people feel like part of your family and going the extra mile. And sure. uh, like you said, um, you know, going back to the law of attraction is putting out that good energy and, yep. and getting it back in return. It sounds like uh, this consistent path that you've been on through your life from, you know, from sports to school to, mm-hmm. you know, almost failing out of school to overcoming and all these different challenges, Mm -hmm. you're still taking that same personality, which is why I like to kind of get a little history on you and you to that next step. And if I'm not mistaken, if you want to mention, I was looking at some of your notes. um, Mm -hmm. It said that you may be featured on HGTV in 2019. What's that about? Well, we, um, again, a word of mouth, we were fortunate to get um, tied in with a really uh, amazing interior designer and, um, Evidently, they're doing a, a hotel up in New York. I, I can't. I'm not. I can't disclose can't talk about the, it. The, the hotel or anything. Or I. But it's a hotel, and um, okay. we're doing we're doing the interior. We're doing a lot of the furniture inside, and um, the guy that's basically transforming this this hotel um, is is an artist, and he wanted very specific. I mean, not just the furniture, but the whole decor is going to be amazing. So each piece of the puzzle to, to build the lobby and to make all the aesthetics, um, he really wanted to pick and choose good players that could see his vision and whatnot. So um, a, a interior designer that we were kind of connected with, she says, I, I have the project for you. I have the guy for you to meet. So we spoke with him. I kind of got an idea of what he was looking to do. And I said, well, and I showed him some of the things that we've done and some of the things we're capable of doing. And he just, this is it. This is good. So um, we are currently building uh, that furniture right now. 
and uh, we're getting it out in the next uh, few weeks. And um, I don't know exactly when they're going to air it, uh, but we'll definitely be featured on there. Um, and we know a couple of the other hosts and, and the production company that works with HGTV. Um, and we've, we've talked to them about a few other things, but um, we're just, again, trying to control, make sure our growth isn't mm -hmm. getting out of control. There are other furniture companies out there that are on these channels and you know it they're they're just I, I imagine they're 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 just going through craziness you know trying to keep up with, with everything else and but i don't fact, want to make you listen you know? though you were you were you were you were in pfizer for 11 mm -hmm. years yeah, a lot of yeah. people would have stuck on that path because mm -hmm. a lot of people like what's normal and yeah. and feels good and and they stick to a pattern and breaking that mm -hmm. pattern and and moving across the country and doing all these things. It seems like, you know, a big part of what you're talking about is getting to learn how to be the, the best version of yourself possible, mm -hmm. learn how to continue to build your uh, skill set and, and relationships and communication, uh, wearing your heart on your sleeve, being an honest person and not being afraid to try something new and follow your heart and passion. And there's times probably I'm sure you felt like maybe you made mistakes and <sighs> here you are now able to take yeah. a look at the fact that, you may even have some of your items featured on a, on a huge, huge home decor channel mm -hmm. that I know is on in my house, you know, yeah. the majority of the day. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? So, yeah. um, yeah. It's you know, even, even if it doesn't become a huge, huge thing is, and you don't want to grow into this giant company, the fact that you've done something that's already touched people. Uh, I think when you said you were doing things, you didn't quite find you were, something was missing. The creative, creative, creativity rather yeah. was missing. Yeah, uh, I'm hoping. Do you feel like you have finally found what you're supposed to be doing? Yeah, I do. I do. I think, and and it's. I think it's going to evolve uh, from here, you know, on out. I mean, I, um, my my passion really is when I get when I when I bring in a customer or I bring in a potential client, and we walk around my shop and I just kind of watch what they're looking at and I'll show them this kind of wood and they just wow, you know, and they oh, you know, we start to draw things out and their excitement inspires me, mm -hmm. you know, like, like it, it, that's your purpose. And you're, you're just, you're allowing them to really, you're, you're just working together to make this thing that fits their home, like a glove or their business, like a glove. And it just, it makes that bold statement that they're looking for and getting that even prior to the sale. Um, it's just that, that interaction that to me is so much fun. I'm not a sales guy either. I'm not, I mean, I, I've never been. Um, but a lot of people say, well, you, Hey, you're so good with customers. I'm like, well, I'm passionate about it. So mm -hmm. maybe that, and, and I know what I'm talking about. So when they come in and we, we, we discuss these things, they, I try to put them at ease. I try to be as humble as I can and just, you know, kind of feel their personality out and, and it, it, it grows from there, but I, there's no technique other than, you know, the fundamentals of something that we're building, you know? Yeah. So, well, being sincere uh, and being sincere, passionate yeah. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. and caring about people. I mean, exactly. it, it, people look for the, uh, you know, the, the easy path mm -hmm. or the tricks on how to skip ahead. It's yeah. the same thing in martial arts. How do I get yeah. to be like you are? You know, yeah. Show up every day, yeah. fail, fail a lot, ask fail a lot, lot of yes. questions, yeah. don't give up, be humble. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Be willing to learn, be willing to admit you're wrong and just keep consistent and keep yeah. after it. And that's yeah. it. You know what I mean? Sure. That That is the secret. You know what I mean? It and, is. And, 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 you know, hopefully surround yourself by people that maybe are in, in paths in life that you hope to get to and have mm -hmm. people that you surround yourself by that, that love you and support you along the way. So mm -hmm. that's right. I think, I think you found a good formula. I think so. Always have a mentor, always have, you know, and, have someone out there that's doing something better than you are and, and really learn from them and ask questions. That's for sure. And, and really open yourself up to some, some truth, you know, if, mm -hmm. if, if you can, how am I doing? How is this, you know, how is my reaction? That too, just attitude. Oh, you know, absolutely. Uh, Always yeah. learning and growing. Imagine what we're going to know five or 10 years from now and look back at our versions of ourselves today and, and see things we could have done differently, I'm sure. That's right, but, uh, yeah, for sure. Um, anyway, I wanted to uh, give you an opportunity since we've been speaking about your company, where could mm -hmm. people find and learn more about what you're doing or maybe even look mm -hmm. online and, and, and get one of the custom pieces in mm -hmm. their home. So take mm -hmm. a minute out and, 
and let me know uh, and let everyone in the audience know about your company. Sure. So uh, kswoodcraft.com is our main website. Um, we're on Instagram. Everybody's on Instagram. Uh, <laughs> um, but by the way, that, that's a tough part is the whole uh, doing the, uh, the social media. That's, uh, it is. It's a full-time you know, job. It's a full-time I'm, pulling out my, I'm pulling out my phone now to look up, to look up everything. Here. Oh, oh, it's crazy. <laughs> Yeah, but we are uh, KS underscore Woodcraft on Instagram. Um, you can look up our, our Facebook page. Just type in face, uh, KS Woodcraft and Facebook. Uh, we have a house page. Uh, we have a lot of designers, a lot of architects that are on house. So we have some of our good projects on there. Um, and you, again, just KS Woodcraft and house. And those are really our main sites is our website, Instagram, Facebook, and house. That's a way to get in touch with us. So. Um, well, I think I looked at your website and you have a lot more than I, than I thought you did and your pieces are, are, are gorgeous and I'd love to oh, see them you. in person and, yeah. and hopefully, uh, own one one day, man. Yeah, and well, you're doing something that you love and you're working hard at it and it hasn't been a straightforward path, but you mm -hmm. found, you found your way and you have someone, uh, in your corner to love you and support you, um, uh, which is amazing, man. Yeah. And, yeah, um, for sure. So any, any, any parting thoughts or words for anyone that's listening? Um, I mean, I, th I think we got a lot of it out. Um, no, I mean, I, I don't consider myself, you know, any, anything special. I just, I, I love what I do and you know, whether it grows to be something huge or something the size that it, that it's at right now, I think I'd be happy in life, you know, and, like, like we said, it took a while to find that. And, you know, if you haven't found that, don't give up on it. Right. Um, maybe do something on the side or talk to somebody or mm -hmm. learn about it. I mean, YouTube is such a good resource to mm -hmm. learn something. Um, I feel like, you know, I could just look at something and go, Oh, I could, I could make that. I could, you know, and, and I think anybody can, um, you can learn to play the guitar. You can learn to cook. You can learn anything. You know, everything's, at, you know, in, in this thing. And, um, you know, take a risk, you know, but just be humble along the way and ask questions. That's it, man. Follow your dreams. Follow your passions. Yep. You know, if you want to do something, like you said, find the person that have already achieved it. Don't reinvent the wheel. Right. Find some mentors. Mm -hmm. and keep after it and expect that it's not always going to go perfectly. You're going to have your bumps. You're going to have your failures. But if you're at least doing something that you love and you're passionate about, um, you're wealthy. You know what I mean? Oh, and, and be happy when you fail. I mean, when we fail, when we get, if something happens, I'm, I'm almost kind of happy about it because you can learn what you did and, and know what mistake not to make again. You know, and that's something that's so, I mean, it's rare sometimes, but it's, it's so good when that happens and people are scared to fail. And I don't understand why um, it's okay to fail. It really is. It's, it's so helpful. And, yeah. um, you know, now, and, and that's, that's the main thing. People don't do things out of fear and complacency, but man, get out there and fail and learn from it. It's great. You'll, you learn what not to do next time and you'll get better. Right. Either you win or you learn. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? That's right. That's right. Failure, failure's not the end. You know, you're That's winning right. or you're learning, man. Mm -hmm. Well, listen, it was, it was not, as I said, I think it's, yeah. uh, it's interesting and odd all at the same time that this is our longest conversation I in know, all of right? these years. <laughs> uh, we're doing it backwards. I'm getting to know all about yeah. you years mm -hmm. after attending your wedding, which is beautiful, mm -hmm. by the way. For sure. Oh, thank uh, you. Yeah. Um, but hopefully this is, uh, the first of many conversations we could have also as a fellow business owner, you yeah. ever want to, you ever want to talk business or anything like that, even in different genres of business, there's a lot of things I'm sure we could touch base on, For sure. um, but, uh, hopefully we'll have a chance to catch up with you guys soon, whether you're out here, Definitely. we get a chance yeah. to head out West. Sure. Um, but I want to just thank you for, I know you're a busy man and thank yeah, you for taking no, the time no out of your, out of your day to, uh, to come on the podcast, man. It was my pleasure and I wish you the best of luck. I mean, this is a great thing. So keep it up and I, I'm looking forward to who you have next. So, oh, thank you. Well, listen, if you ever have anybody that you think, um, mm -hmm. would go well on the show, mm -hmm. feel free to send me their information. I'm always open to meeting and learning about new people. So I sure will. Excellent. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. hopefully you enjoyed uh, today's podcast uh, with Life's Black Belt, uh, Ken uh, Schumacher. I'll be adding in all of the uh, show notes, the links to his website and social media. Uh, and until then, I hope you guys have a wonderful week.